This right here is a piece of CG history. When it was first shown in Seagraph almost 20 years ago, it blew everyone away and it redefined the way we approach lighting and CG. Unfortunately, the only high quality copy we have available is this compressed 720 by 480 pixel video. It's better than nothing, but it's still not enough for such an iconic piece. Which brings me to the following question. Is there a way we can create a better version out of this video? Before we go any further, a quick history lesson. This video is called Fiat Lux. It's the brainchild of Paul de Bevec, this guy right here. He and his team created some groundbreaking techniques we still use to this day. First was this short here, which showcases how we can achieve realistic results by projecting photos and videos onto 3D geometry. Then came Fiat Lux, the subject of our video. Instead of regular CG lights, it used high dynamic range photos for lighting the CG environment. In combination with uh, camera mapping, it created some jaw-dropping results. History lesson over. So, how will we go about enhancing this video? Unfortunately, regular imagery sizing in Photoshop doesn't give adequate results. It's not terrible, but we're trying to get something better than this. This is where AI-based image enhancers come in, but these work quite well on images they're trained for. Trees, rocks, water, buildings, hair, and so on. Stuff that basically exists in the real world. So in our case, it's not guaranteed it'll work great. But even if things do work to our advantage, I'm still not getting my hopes up. We're working with really low resolution footage, and there's no way we can get any useful detail out of it. On top of that, we have one more roadblock, the actual quality of the footage. In what I assume was an effort to produce the final video as fast as possible and hit the C-graph deadline, Debevec and his team took several shortcuts. When inspecting the footage, there are several areas with poor anti-aliasing, geometry disappearing, and weird interlaced frames that have been probably converted to a progressive image. So make no mistake, I have zero expectations of getting anything that will look remotely passable, but we will still give it a try. Basically, the only way we can get a clean and detailed version of this video is if Paul Debevic himself would re-render everything in high resolution. That would be awesome, but until that happens, we'll have to make do with what we have in our hands. The software I'm going to use for upscaling is called Video Enhance AI. It has a very poorly ported Mac version that only uses the CPU to do the processing, so it's incredibly slow. But we have one thing going for us. It looks like they've trained the AI not only with real-world footage, but also with CG images. That is very important. I tried other image enhancing solutions, and the results were atrocious. The software is as bare bones as it can get. We can choose between the type of image enhancement and the amount of magnification. And that's about it. But let's preview a couple of frames. We're not off to a great start here, but we can easily redo the text ourselves. I don't need to be an expert to know that this is Times New Roman. So we can recreate these titles quite easily. Now let's see how well the AI works on the actual images. It definitely seems to remove the video artifacts and we see some nice smooth edges and surfaces. Something we could not really get with uh, regular image resizing in uh, Photoshop. It also seems to work better in particular scenes. In most of the architectural elements, it seems to create this uh, painterly effect which in some cases is a bit too intense. Granted, it doesn't have much detail there to work with, but it does the best job it can do. After a couple of hours of uh, processing, we have the final image sequence. From a first glance, the image looks a bit too oversharpened, which in turn seems to mess with the haze effect uh, present in the original video. We need to recreate that in post. Without it, the image looks a little bit too processed and weird, so we definitely need to dial that back up again. Let's jump now into Final Cut and see how we can improve things. Let's first overlay the original video to see if there's any perceptible improvement. It looks like there actually is. Of course, we don't really get any additional detail there. It's just a smoother, cleaner image without video artifacts and with a ton of sharpening added. But it looks like a better image overall. It's not going to win any awards, but there's not much else we can do. Now let's work on the hazy effect. 
To achieve that, I'll just duplicate the video sequence, blur it, and then reduce the opacity. This will give us the hazy look we're after. I'm going to use two different layers of haze, one stronger with heavier blur for the overall scene and one with a narrower blur that will basically smooth out the surrounding edges and make the painterly artifacts in the background a bit less harsh. I'm going to use a really low opacity value, 10 to 20%. Let's compare some before and after images. I don't think all the sequences need the blurring effect since some of the close-ups are already too blurry, so I'll leave some of the close-ups in their original state. Now let's compare again the original video to the new footage. Not too bad. The final thing we need to add to our footage is noise. In most cases, noise on an image gives the perceived sense of detail and it also makes the whole image look a little bit more natural. I'm going to treat each sequence a bit differently. So the close-ups will have a bit more noise as if the lenses used to shoot the action were slow. In most cases, that is actually true. And for the wider scenes, I'm going to use faster lenses so the noise is going to be finer. Let's see how we did. I don't know how visible it is through YouTube's compression, but the images with the noise feel much better. They look way more natural than the ones without any noise. Now let's see how things look on a bigger screen. I created three versions. One is the video straight out of the AI application, the second is with the haze effect added, and the third one is with the haze effect and the noise. The bitrate for all videos is 56 megabits per second. From a distance and if I don't pixel peep, the video coming straight out of the AI application looks quite good. The super smooth surfaces make the image look very clean and the over sharpening is not so noticeable in motion. It actually helps the image look clearer. The hazy version doesn't look that bad, but it's definitely softer than the video coming straight out of the AI application. But the image definitely looks better than the AI one if you pixel peep. It also feels much more faithful to the original. Of course, in both versions, some sequences cannot really be saved. There's not a lot of information we can get out of each frame. There's also so much flickering from the low anti-aliasing values and the interlacing, it just makes those sequences hard to look at. Now the sequence with the noise. I think I need to exaggerate the noise a little bit more in order to be visible. In some sequences, like some of the close-ups, the effect looks great, but in others, it's not adding up to a whole lot. It's nice that it's there, but I'm not so sure the effect will come through on the compressed YouTube video. This is a 56 megabits per second video, and if I remember correctly, 4K videos on YouTube top out at 38 to 40 megabits per second. I think the hazy version without any noise is the best out of all three. But let's see how things look on YouTube. I uploaded several versions of the video, all the ones I checked on TV and also the same ones with different bit rates. I wanted to see at which point a higher bit rate won't make a difference and it looks like 56 megabits per second is kind of the best balance between size and quality. The better one on YouTube is also the hazy version. The one with the noise added just doesn't translate well with uh, YouTube's uh, compression. Most of the noise is uh, smoothed out and what we're left with is bigger areas that flicker more than we would like. So in the end, the image with the noise looks more degraded than detailed. So I guess we'll have to go with the hazy version. Now, because of the copyright claims uh, triggered from the music used, I will have the final 4K version of the Fiat Lux as a separate video. This will ensure that the YouTube algorithm won't bury this video and more people will get to see the process. You can find the link in the description below and also on the end card of this video. My final thoughts? We did the best we could do with the footage available, but of course don't expect any <laughs> earth-shattering results it's as good as it can get. But I'll let you be the judge of it. Let me know what you think in the comments below. Now, go watch the final result.